been on the market looking around for the best SD card for your Canon R8, your Canon R6 Mark II, or your Canon R7. Any of these cameras that shoot that really high frame rate stills at 30 or 40 frames a second, well, this is a video for you. So let's talk about it. If you own one of these cameras that shoots between 20 and 40 frames a second, kind of like this Canon R7 here that shoots 30 frames a second, and the cameras don't support CF Express Type B or CF Express Type A, then you're limited to UHS-2 V90 card. And the V90 cards, they have a higher price tag compared to the V30 cards. So what's the difference in a V30 card and a V90 card? The V30s, they shoot about 75, 85 megabytes a second, and the V90s get from 260 to 300 megabytes a second on the write speed. And why do we need those higher write speeds? Well, it's not because the initial burst, like when you hold the shutter down and just rattle off like this R7, just, you know, at 30 frames a second, because they all do about the same, V30, V90, on the initial burst. What it matters is, is when you hit that buffer. So you hold the shutter button down, you rattle off those images until it hits slams. It's about 66, 69 shots, and then it hits the wall on the Canon cameras and stops. What it's doing now is it has to take those shots and put them onto the card. So that's where the write speed becomes important. So it's trying to offload those images you took. It's trying to offload them as you're taking them also. What happens is it overruns the buffer, trying to get them off the card, and then it stops, and then it has to clear the buffer enough to start taking more pictures. So that's where the higher speed comes into play. And just like the Type B cards we talked about before, these SD cards are not all the same at V90. They all have a different read speed and write speed. Write speed is what we care about. And we also don't care about max write speed. We want sustained write speed. And we'll get into these numbers also. And what's the SD card we're going to talk about today that I'm kind of excited to show you? Well, it's another card by Exascend, and this is the essential brand of their SD V90 cards. It's a 128 gigabyte storage capacity one. And yeah, this is the same brand that I did the Type B card, talking about the fastest card, one of the better cards, and especially value and speed, for the Type B. And it's still the card that I use all the time on my Nikon Z9, every time. And that card has been great. It hasn't overheated or any of those things. It's, it's worked flawlessly, and I've been using it for several, like six, seven months already, and never had a problem with it. And I've been testing this Exascend for over a month to look at it and see how well it does. And V90 cards are not all made the same like we talked about before. And what's another reason I'm really excited about this card? Well, this is one of the giveaway items in the 10,000 subscriber Christmas giveaway we're doing here on the channel. And it just floors me to be able to say 10,000 subscribers. That's not a goal I thought I was going to hit for several years, if at all. And it's just amazing. And thank you all for watching the channel, supporting the channel, all the great comments you guys leave me. It's a great community. And to afford me the ability to get out here and do this type of stuff, to do these videos, to get out in the field and show you all that Alaska is and all the animals here in Alaska. It's just spectacular to be able to do this. Just amazing. Thank you, guys. And this is one of the items as a thank you. We're going to have one more review coming up here in the next day or two, probably Thursday. I think this is going to go out on Tuesday. And that'll be the second item. And then we're going to have four more items for the giveaway. And this card right here, Exascend sent me this card. Again, no obligation to make a video or nothing. They were just asking what I thought of that last Type B card. You know, it was a long-term part of it. And I said, it was awesome. And I said, I'm also doing a giveaway. Do you have anything? And they suggested these SD cards. So I've got one of these going to go out to one of you. So watch for later in the video that I'll tell you how to do get your entry for this card. It is fantastic. So now let's talk about how this guy tests out and why I'm really excited about it and why I really like it. So again, it's a V90 card. It's a 128 gigabyte capacity that I do have higher. This is the essential one and it has a 260 megabyte sustained write speed. They do have another one that is 290, so it'll be faster than this one, but we'll show you how this one tests out. So today we're gonna test this card against two other V90 cards and one V30 to show you the difference in a V30 versus a V90. And the cards we're going to test it against today is the other two cards that I have. That's why. And the first card is the Sony Tough G card. It's another 128 gigabyte card rated a V90. This one does not have sustained write speed listed on the website or anywhere. It just has its max write speed. So we don't know what sustained write speed is on that one. 
And the second car we're going to test against is a Lexar 2000X V90 card. Again, another 128 gigabyte card. This one states it's write speed, sustained write speed is the same as the Exosyn at 260 megabytes. So really nice. And this has been my better card. And then finally, with a V30 card we're going to test, is just a standard Kingston V30 card. V30 cards are pretty much all pretty close to each other. And their sustained write speed is about 60 to 85 there on what they can write to through it. So how are we going to test these cards and what are we expecting of these cards to say which one I feel like is the best out of these three cards we're going to test against, the XSN, the Sony, and the Lexar? Well, the first thing is, is when you're taking stills, when you hit that buffer, how quickly it's going to clear to start taking images again. That's the biggest thing we need. So if we actually hit that buffer, how long do we expect for it? We need to, you know, be able to take pictures again. That's the first thing. So what you're going to see in here, as you hold the shutter down, shoot 60 to 69. I'll give you the numbers for each card before it hits that wall. And then how quickly, as it's been trying to clear the buffer and it has to pause for the buffer, do I take another picture? And how quickly does it keep doing that? Because it'll just keep doing it over. It'll take a few more stalls, a few more stalls. So which one is the best at clearing that buffer? And as far as video, they all work great. So we're not going to show you that. They all work at high speed video without a problem. And as we hold this shutter down, we're keeping the lens cap on the camera. Why is that? Well, what we're doing is trying to reduce any outside interference by letting the car do its thing offload with the same exact file size every time. If you shoot with not the lens cap on, the camera is going to look at the scene, evaluate the scene, it's going to pass that type of information to the camera, and your file sizes could change. In the controlled environment, like in the studio, the light should be close enough where we shouldn't get file size changes. But I have found when I've done the test that they do vary quite a bit when I have the lens cap off and it's captured and what it sees over there. I can run the same test on one card and get pretty close to the same results, but I see variance. When I shoot it with the lens cap on, where basically I have everything exactly the same as it takes the picture as far as data that's going to the card, it works better that way. It stays really consistent as it goes across to everything. So that's how we're going to conduct this test to show you what we've got. Now let me show you how the waveforms look as we recorded those for 30 seconds of the V30 and the V90 and show you why definitely you want a V90 card. So if you look over here, the top one here is that Kingston V30. And the bottom one here is the Exosend V90. And you'll notice right here, look how many more shots you're getting. And that's all you get in 30 seconds. You look here at the V90, see how many times it's clearing off? Boom, 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 boom. Every time. Looks great. So that's why you use a V90 card so you can get back to taking shots to clear that buffer. That's why you spend the extra money for a V90 card. So this is what the waveforms look like with these three cards right here. And you'll see the Exoscend on top, the Lexar in the middle, and the Sony Tough G on the bottom. So let's look at them, see that it performed. And we can glance at it real quickly and tell the Sony G tough card from the initial burst to the next part we picked up was the worst performing on this. And this is the way they looked up every time. I did these about 50 times each, so I'm getting tired of hitting that button and look at these waveforms over and over and over and timing it out there. And you can see as it goes through here, this next trough is a little better and it's kind of looking like the other two after that. It's still got a little bit of a gap. So we get that initial burst at about 60, and actually the Sony got 61 every time on the initial burst. So the initial burst, when you hold the button down to get that first burst, every card was exactly the same. It stopped at the same number of shots every time. The Sony was 61. The V30 was 65. It did better than the V90. The Lexar was 66, and the Exit Sand was always 69. They were the same every time when I held on that shutter for that first burst. So you see with the Sony, we got about 61 in there, and then we picked up about 20 and 30. So we got, basically got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more bursts after the fact. So to me, the Sony, as just like the Type B card, performed the worst out of the comparisons in this. Still a good card, but it didn't perform as well as the other two. So that leaves us with the Exoscend and the Lexar to compare against each other. So let's look at them real quick. So you'll see up here, again, we're at 65, 69 every time, four shot difference, not a big deal. So the first burst hits, and if you'll look, the Exoscend 
edges it out a little bit. We'll zoom in a little bit more so you can look at that first little burst there. So you'll see right here after that first burst, it is just a touch ahead, not a big deal. Once we get to the next burst, you'll see the exit end is winning. Let me zoom back in a little bit more so we can see everything here. And you'll see by the second burst that the exit end is winning again. Third burst, exit end is winning again. And you notice in the third burst, the second burst was better on the Lexar, but better on the third burst on the exit end. And then you get to the next one, exit sends wind again, and it, from there on, it just keeps edging it out over time. So what we're seeing is they're both rated at 260 megabytes sustained write speed, but that exit send is edging out that, and this is the results I got every time. Every once in a while, I get a little bit of variance, but not too much. But this is the way it performed every time. And what you'll actually also see in here, with right at almost 30 seconds, because where this little bar ends up over here, that's where the 30 second timer ran out every time. So you'll see that you're getting one more little burst out of that in 30 seconds and you're getting with the Lexar card. Because in the Lexar, you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight burst. The exit stand, you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine burst. So you're getting more images and you're getting back into that image taking a lot faster than you are with the Lexar. So to me, that performs a lot better. And I would have compared against more cards, but that's the cards I got. And the reason is, these cards run, you know, just under $200 each one of them. So I can't afford to have a ton of them, especially when I have these CF Express cards that cost three to $400 sometimes. And that's why that Exascend was a great value. So with that being said, let's talk about the value of these cards. So I do have the prices of all these cards. So your Kingston cards, your old V30s, you know, those run anywhere from, you get them on sale from anywhere from $25, you know, for 128 gigabyte, for $25 to $45. As far as the V90s, how do they price out? Well, let's start with the Sony Tough card. It's the most expensive. It is $190, this guy is here. So this V90, $190, and it performed the worst. The next one is the Lexar. So the Lexar 200X, 2000X, excuse me, the gold one here, again, 120 gigabyte. It lists around $170. I have seen it on sale in a two pack, a little better, which it makes it about $140, $150 in a two pack, about $300. So that's really good too. Where does the Exascend pop in? Well, the Exascend pops in $134. The cheapest one and the best performing. So we've talked about the speed of the cards, we've talked about the price of the card. Now we're going to talk about the build of these cards. And we'll start with the Sony Tough card. The Sony Tough card is supposed to be dust resistant, water resistant. That's why it's called a tough card. It's supposed to be one of the better, tougher cards, which is really nice. The Lexar, I didn't see too much about that looking at their website as far as the how well it is for water and climate and dirt and all that kind of stuff. But it seems like a fairly decent card. But I will tell you about filling the two cards that this Sony card is a lot thicker, and I can tell it's a lot tougher. With the Lexmark, I feel like I could snap this in two if I really pushed really hard, which I'm not going to, it's too expensive. And the Sony Tough card, it's gonna take a lot more force to break this guy and to tear it up. Now, how does the Exit Sin stack up? Well, stacks up really well. To be honest with you, it feels like I could really probably bend the Sony before I could bend this Exit Sin, so that's really good. And this Exascend is waterproof, dustproof, climate hardened, impact resistant, x-ray safe, and magnetism proof. And same with the Sony Tough card. It's got a lot of those things too. But this one's rated for all those. So this card is tough. It feels good. You're not going to tear it up. Like I said, I've been using this guy for well over a month. And I've been using this Sony Tough card for years, actually, in all my other cameras. And it's held up really well. It works great. This Lexar, it's the one that I use with my Sony camera for high speed. It's a great card, I like it. Um, it was price versus size and performance was one of the better ones when I was looking at the store when I bought this one at Stewart's. And like I said earlier, I'm really happy that Exascend reached out to me originally with that Type B card. And when they were asking for the review of it, I said, can you send me a thing? And they sent me a couple of these. What I'd like for all you guys to do out there because Exacin has been so awesome about sending this card out for a giveaway. Could you all go to their Instagram site 
and just give them a follow or just leave a little message on there and say, hey, thanks for sending out the card for the giveaway or anything. Just leave a comment on their site. I think that'd be really cool. I'll link it down in the comments how to get to their Instagram page too. But it's really cool them giving this card out. Now, how do you make an entry for this card? Gonna be pretty simple. All you gotta do is leave a comment on this video. Be subscribed to the channel. Be subscribed to the channel. I can see if you're subscribed or not when I look at the comments. And tell me what camera you'd like to use this SD card in, this UHS-2, if you want it. So those three things. Subscribe, leave a comment, and in the comment, tell me which camera you'd like to use with this SD card. And that's pretty much it. This is a fantastic card, guys. I'm really happy with this card. I think when you guys get this card, whoever wins it, I want you to do a little quick write-up to it and send me an email back and tell me what you thought of this card. And I'll do a follow-up review with my Type B and this one. And we'll see how they did with the guys that won it, whoever won this card, and what I think of it in a long-term review on that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now, for the giveaways. We're going to have one more review of another product coming up really soon. It'll probably come two more days after this one, on Thursday, hopefully. And then Saturday or Sunday, I'll release another video that has the rest of the giveaway items and how to enter and how to do all that fun stuff. So watch for that. And then right before Christmas, we'll pull the giveaways for all six items. One's going to be the card and five more surprise items. You guys are going to love the rest of them. This is not the best item given away, but it's really close because this is awesome because SD cards, V90s are really hard to get that are really good. So as always, guys, if you like the channel, you're enjoying it, subscribe, comments, all that fun stuff. Thanks again for watching, getting us to 10,000 subscribers. Just awesome. This is awesome. Until the next video, guys, get outside and go run that shutter.